This video will continue our discussion of sketching space curves in three space uh, given this function. So we have this vector value function. Um, this one's going to be a little bit more. It's not a line. Um, it's not going to be a nice pretty line. It's not going to be a path through just nice pretty space like we have done. It's going to actually be a path that lives on a certain surface. Um, so let me show you to, how to go about that. So the beginning process is exactly the same. You do x equals t, y equals t squared, and then z equals t cubed. Now, I am going to take x and y. We could do this either way. I could take y and z, but x and y are going to be the easier ones to put together. So putting these together, we have y equals x squared. Okay, so this in three space, I know it doesn't feel like it, but this is a cylinder along, the z is missing, so we get all z's along z with trace on xy plane. And the trace will be the surface that was given there, or uh, sorry, the, the function that was given there, y equals x squared. Um, so we should know that that is a problem. The xy plane is flat, so I'm going to try to do my best to graph a parabola. Um, I'm going to try to get these points correctly because I never can get them right. Um, so give me a sec. I'm going to do a parallel line here. That way I can grab any points at 1. If I can move the line. There we go. I need those points, and then I'm going to duplicate that and do it at 4 as well, because I know I'm going to have outputs there. Um, and then I'm going to do a couple straight lines to help me with that. So I'm going to put the first one at 1, and then I'm going to duplicate this a few times. I need it at 2. I also need one at negative 1, and one at negative 2. I'm just doing these values because this is... This is what I'm going to uh, graph on. Oh, there's that other one. There we go. All right. There we go. Um, this is going to give me my points for my parabola. So I know my parabola usually goes... Oh, let's switch it to an actual... There we go. 1, 1, right? And we're thinking on that flat plane. I go over 1, I go up 1. Y, Z. Or X, Y, sorry. And then I go over two and I usually go up four. So I did all these grid lines because you can see that they're like spaced out and I really want them to look like a parabola that's flat. So let's see how bad I can make this sketch. Oh, wrong thing. Something like that. Uh, we could probably do better there. All right, so we have that. Um, I'm going to erase all these lines. Hopefully it looks like it. There we go. Uh, you know, I did my best. So there is my parabola. I was hoping that would help. It really doesn't. With the grid lines there, it kind of looked like it was flat. So this is a cylinder. So how I do these here on my iPad, you're going to have to sketch that a few times. I'm just going to copy this and duplicate it and just to move it. Oh, it duplicated the whole thing. Um, let's see if I can just move all right let me move this graph out of the way oh i can't okay so it looks like i get to sketch it with you guys again um so i'm just going to go up like three i just put these points kind of in the same in the same area like that and then down one and out one Right there, and then out here, um, well, let's line it up. And this one, that'll be out there. Okay, so we get some kind of parabola like this. Did my point way too high up there. All right, so, and then this parabola goes on like that. And then I need one maybe down here. I'm going to do it at negative 5. I line my points up again. So we got some kind of other problem. All right, so there's my cylinder almost. I'm going to go ahead and connect them now. Okay, so I get a line going this way. 
a line maybe going through these points there. Through all three points. All right, I'm going to go ahead and make this prettier. I'm making a straight line. There we go. And then we could do a couple dotted lines maybe in the back. Um, so we'll do this one on this back side. Straights. Okay. And then I'm going to put some points on that back curve maybe to help understanding that they are there. All right, I hope you can see the cylinder. It's kind of hard to see. Um, it's almost like a half pipe, almost, if you know what that is. Um, that's not a pipe pipe, but in skateboarding, um, could be uh, a ditch, right? Something like that. So I'll put those there. You can kind of see there the the cylinder. It's a parabola going up and down forever. All right, where this leads us now, this is kind of neat that it works out this way. The That will give me a surface. So y equals x squared gives a surface. This is where your path that the vector value function actually travels along will live on top of. So that gives that my final component that I didn't use, z equals t cubed, will actually give a space curve. So it gives space curve. That's just a curve that lives in space. So the z equals t cubed will explain the path that it's moving on, but it will live on that surface. Okay, so I'm going to get a couple uh, points here. Let's do t equals zero, and I'm going to do this in a different color here, t equals zero. If I plug that in, r of zero is equal to the zero vector. Okay, so I do know it starts right here. t equals one, or let's do t equals two. Plugging in 2. The reason I did 2 is I wanted a little bit more room. It's t, which is 2, 4, and then t cubed is 8. So 2, 4, 8. And there's a vector pointing at that, so let's do our best to do that. I'm going to try to sketch this well. Um, so I got 2 in that component. I got 4 in the other component. So I'm going to get me a parallel line. four and then eight it's way up here I'm just gonna do we're actually kind of out of room there so I'm gonna do a six and we'll call it eight okay uh, we can get the point of what it's gonna look like um, so there's my point it's gonna be up here all right so now oh I'm gonna put an X here so we can see where that's at. All right, so this point lives there and it like curves around and is going to keep going on that surface. So that three dimensional shape in orange there is that like valley on its side type thing. It's probably living like that. The blue graph starts at that and it stays on the surface of our orange, sur uh, on the orange surface. <laughs> it stays on the surface of the orange surface. The blue line stays on that and that's the path that actually travels. We can get more points, but at this point it's going to be hard to see because the numbers are going to get big if I plug a three in or four because of that cube. So we're not going to be able to see it anyway. Um, I would recommend maybe graphing this in a three dimensional grapher. Um, and then um, a lot of these three-dimensional graphers will graph a vector. So go ahead and mess with it until you can find the vector and plug that in. And you can see that the blue line get made from that vector um, will live on this surface, the cylinder. All right, let's get another one in because these can be a bit tricky. Um, I think I have three for you in this video. So let's take a look at the next one. All right, so we have this space. Um, I need a three to hold on. Let me grab this graph. Cool. All right. Let me erase all this stuff. Sorry, I usually have this done, but I guess I forgot to do it. All right. So let's go ahead and graph on this thing. So we have the function. The first thing I'm going to do is identify each part. Sine is four sine t. OK, 
Okay, y is negative 2 cosine t, and then z is t. Right. Anytime I see a sine and cosine like this, I always take this route. I know it's going to be circular or elliptical in some sense, so I'm going to solve for sine on both of them, or sine and cosine, the trig function. Uh, we also have negative y over 2 equals cosine t. And then the reason I know this is because now I can work off this trig function that I hope you guys have memorized. If not, you need to get it in there. The Pythagorean triple, and I can plug each one of these in, just squaring them. x squared over 16, and then we got y squared, the negative goes away, over 4, and then that still equals 1. Okay, this should tell me something, right? A red flag should go off here. That is a cylinder. So a cylinder. Um, along, okay, we're missing the z. So along z axis um, and trace is in x y plane. The trace is also an ellipse. Uh, if I can spell it right, I think that's it. Ellipse. Uh, forgive me if the spelling's wrong. Texting and word has ruined my spelling because I can just get it kind of right and it graphs it for me. All right, so I know the trace is an ellipse in the x y plane. These tell me my length of my axes. In the x direction, it's going to go 4. In the y direction, it's going to go 2. All right, so I'm going to do my best to create an ellipse from here. I think you get the point. Okay, so there's my ellipse. And I actually can take that thing now, and I'm going to see if I can duplicate it this time. Yeah, okay. So, and I just line it up. I don't know what the last, the problem in the last video was, or the last problem, same video. Um, I'm going to line these up, so I'm going to draw a, go ahead and do my solid line that goes out here. Um, let's get it straight. Move it. I'm going to put this right with that one. All right, and we get that point and that point. We also get a straight line here. To represent that, I'm going to do a dotted line to represent the back half. I went off the screen, so it's not going to fix. There we go. Right, that dotted line is going to be this back side. We also can do a solid line up here. All right, so that is the surface which the on which the um, path will go along. So it's this big cylinder that's an ellipse, not round. To find the actual trace, it's going to be based on the t um, off to the side. So as t grows, z grows, but we have to figure out what t's are going to be when we get to each point. So let's start. We're just going to make a list here. t of 0 gets me r prime of 0, which is going to be, okay, if I plug in 0, sine of 0 is 0, cosine of 0 is 1, so I get a negative 2, and then t was 0, so I get 0, negative 2, 0. So let's graph this. That is 0 in the x, negative 2 in the y, and 0 in the z, so it puts me on the outside of my ellipse out there. All right, let's go to the next one. So we'll do t equals... Now, if I got to plug in a trig functions, we should do stuff that makes sense. So I'm going to do pi over 2. Okay, pi over 2. If I go back and look at my function, 4 times sine t. Sine of pi over 2 is 1, so we get a 4. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0, and then pi over 2 here. So I know the next point is going to be 4 in the x, 0 in the y, and pi to up. So I'm just going to raise it up just a little bit. So there's pi over 2, or what I think maybe pi over 2 would be. Okay, and it's on the, it's going around the ellipse cylinder. So that doesn't look like it, but it's coming from the far left side around to the point out in front. All right, I continue. 
you could probably guess what's going to happen. Okay, the next thing that would make sense would to let t be pi. So if I plug that in, sine of pi is 0. Cosine of pi is negative 1, so I get a positive 2. And then we just get a pi. So it does go up again. But now it's over on here, um, right above this 2, um, by pi. So it goes up again. So this goes, looks, it's going around this way and then up that way, right? The next value that would make sense is 3 pi over 2. I'm just picking numbers that work well with my unit circle. I also don't want to do a lot of sketching. I just want to get an idea of what the curve is doing. So if I plug 3 pi into 3 pi over 2 into sine, that's a negative 1. Cosine gets me a 0. And then I get 3 pi over 2, just meaning it's going up again but at negative four, so that's that back side, and it's up again, so it's just continuing upward. And then let's do one more. We'll do t equals two pi. All right, that gets me, it's supposed to be an arrow, r of two pi is equal to zero, negative two, two pi. It's the same as zero, except for z changes, because it was equal to t. So it goes up again, back to the original side that we talked about. And I know these numbers aren't fantastic where I'm doing, but um, I'm just wanting to make sure you understand the what the curve is doing. I want to make it a little steeper. It is going around the cylinder as it goes up. So I'm going to do my arrows. This shows the path going up of my space curve. It is just going around my cylinder. Okay, so I want to point out again, the graph is the red line, not the surface, not the blue. The blue just shows me where the surface is, where the line's going to wrap around. It's the, the pattern that's brought from that. But the blue is just a visual because if I erase this, let me erase all these lines, it's kind of hard to tell what the heck the red graph is doing. But if I throw all that stuff back on, you can see a little better that it's going around the circular elliptical object. All right, I have one more. All right, so let's take a look at this one. Um, I have the same that I've had this whole time. Okay, we're not gonna, I don't have a graph here because we're just gonna think about it um, just to make the videos appropriately long, but we need to go through one more. So x equals three cosine t. Hopefully you have a red flag of what we're going to do this given the sines and cosines. Z equals t. All right, so I again know that cosine t plus sine t squared, both squared equals 1. If I take the sum, if I plug now, I get x squared over 9. That's solving, I guess we should have done that. x over 3 equals cosine t. And y over 2 equals sine t. So if I'm plugging those in, okay, I got y squared over 4 equals 1. All right, again, oh, actually, hold on, real quick. Let me redo something really fast. I'm not going to re-record the video. I'm going to go back to this. I Please forgive me. Um, I changed the problem thinking it was something else. Um, I want to go back to what it was. So forgive me for changing my video. Mid, mid time. So we have that. The same process goes. Okay, I, now I got x over t equals cosine t. If I would have changed it, then it looked a lot like the last problem. And I want to give you something different. All right, so I have those. And um, again, I know cosine squared t plus sine t squared equals 1. So x squared over t squared, kind of weird. Sine squared, sorry, let's replace sine with y y squared over t squared, and then that's going to equal 1. Notice, though, if I do x squared plus y squared equals t squared, um, I have that equation. But I have one more thing. I have this, z equals t. So I can plug z in and get x squared plus y squared equals z squared. I, ho I don't know if that rings any bells for you. Um, this is something that's going to show up quite a bit, especially in the late half of the semester. But this is a cone, right? You could also think about it as x squared plus y squared 
minus e squared, however you want to think about it, but we need to get into our head that this is going to give me a cone. Now, this is a cone along the z, and then since x squared plus y squared is positive in front of both, then it just goes up. So I'm just going to show you what this kind of looks like given a cone. So I have that line, another line, and uh, we have this like cone type figure here. Go around. And then we're going to have something that starts at 0, 0, and it's going to make its way around the cone. So the first thing would be maybe on the back side, um, coming around. Let's see how I can do this. That maybe. And then this side, it's going to be on the side facing us. So it's going to be wrapping around again. Let's keep it kind of curvy. Dotted line. And you can see that it's going to just go up my cone in a circular fashion. It's kind of hard to draw, but it's going around, going up. Okay. That's all we're going to graph on that one. The big thing I need you to see here is that this is a cone. Okay, this is going to keep showing up. So I need you to get this form. If you want to think about it logically, think about as z increases. Okay, so this side here is a circle. So as z goes up, z becomes the radius of that circle. So it's like if z is, sorry about that. My finger grabbed it. If I let z equal 1, then I got x squared plus y squared equals 1 squared. So it's a radius of 1. If I go up, x squared plus y squared equals 2 squared. That's a circle, but now at z equals 2, and it has a radius of 2. So as the z goes up, our circle is getting bigger, creating a cone. Okay, that is graphing um, vector value functions. Um, it's always going to either just be the line. Um, or a nice pretty two-dimensional orientation given on some kind of curve you know, or it's going to be in three dimensions, relate two of them to give you a service, and then use the third one to come up, and, and the first two to come up with points, and the, the surface, the, or sorry, the path that you are graphing, the curve you're graphing actually lives on, type of, on top of the surface you just graphed.